Hey, we are uh, live with Katie Martin, and Katie uh, is actually I, she's getting to test out the new sound uh, soundboard that I have today. So, Katie, welcome to Three Minutes. So, Katie Martin is actually on. I'm gonna have so much fun with this thing. I just did this with Joe Sanfilippo too. Off, you're coming. I yeah. didn't even prepare. Yeah, and just, so uh, actually, we are doing three questions, and so I asked these three questions, and uh, just before uh, Katie's actually currently in the last part of uh, of her new book, and that's coming out very soon, and it is going to be epic. I'm so excited! It is you know, going to. Thanks, yeah, so it's going to be out there pretty quick. We are we are so excited for it. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Okay, so three questions. So the first question, Katie, is talk about a teacher in your career, maybe that one you had as a student at some level that actually really inspired you uh, today. So we chatted a little bit about this and I've been thinking about it and it's been no secret that I didn't really love my K-12 experience uh, for a variety of reasons, but it wasn't until I got into college that I really um, had great teachers that I thought that really connected. Um, and so I think the teacher that has most inspired me is my professor, Paul Daring, who ran my master's program and who I later taught with. But he was just always had the highest expectations for everybody. Anyone could get into his program, no matter what your test scores were, no matter what your kind of like eligibility requirements were, he made sure everyone could get in and had high expectations, but he never let anyone pass. So like best example ever, like he didn't just, no one just passed at the end mm -hmm. with a test. You had to, I would write a paper and he gave me feedback and he's like, you didn't get a B, you didn't like, you got to do it again. I was like, wait a minute, all my other teachers just let me pass and just let me turn it in and move on. And he actually made me work for it. He like raised my writing. He increased like my confidence and made me actually a better writer because he cared, gave me feedback and just didn't let me slide. But he cared about me. He pushed me and he always created the best community and made sure that we were all really bonded as a community. Yeah. And I think, I think for so. me, the, some of the best teachers are, you know, some of the best teachers that we have, not only in education, but in life push us to limits that we sometimes don't even see for ourselves. I think that's really powerful. So shout out to Paul Daring. Like that. All right. So administrator. Okay. So you work with a ton of administrators. I can't even, I wouldn't even be able to guess. Um, Cause I know that you've referenced so many, you know, in your work, you know, people that you worked with. So like, when you think about this, who is probably the first one that comes to your mind? This is hard because you're right. There's so many awesome administrators that I get to work with. But one that comes to mind who I've been dear friends with for many years, and George, I know you know him, uh, David Miyashiro. And he is a superintendent, Cone Valley um, Unified. And he just, what has always stood out to me about David is he's visionary and he, he knows what he wants to accomplish, but he is really willing to go to bat and do the work. So one of the first, you know, couple months that he was superintendent, I remember him, he had like some vendor come in and do a PD and we all sitting there. He had all these teachers that had sub days and it was horrible. And he stood up and he was like, canceling, like, we're not doing this anymore. Your time is too valuable. This, our vision is too important to spend a day wasting this time. And so he let the vendor go. And hmm. brought all the teachers together and said, like, you're not going to sit and listen to someone else today. We're going to spend the day figuring out what we need to do. And that was like, that is how he's led. That's what I've seen him do. And they've made incredible, incredible changes in that district and done really great things for kids in the community because that's been his vision the whole time. And that's how he's operated as a leader. So he's one that really stands out to me. And that's, that's like a really powerful example because I think sometimes, you know, we have a vision, we have things that we want to accomplish, you know, in administrative roles. Yet we have to be able to redirect, you know, our own ambitions or our own expectations when things are not working and things are not happening for your staff. And I, I love that. So big round of applause for David. Yes. All right. Last question. This is a hard one. 
Okay, so you look back on your teaching career, and I know we've been in education for a while. If you were to go back and talk to Katie in her first year of teaching, what advice would you give to yourself based on what you know today? I'm going to cheat a little bit and give you two. So right. the first piece of advice I got uh, the day before I stepped into my classroom and, uh, you know, someone said, just make sure that you build relationships with the kids. Like if you connect with them and you value them, you'll be fine. That is literally how I have worked with kids my whole career and anyone I met and it's been amazing. So I would keep that and I would, I would make that the mm -hmm. priority. The second thing I would do that I would change is I would have documented and shared what I was doing so much earlier. And, you know, it's no secret that you have pushed me to share and blog for the last five or six years. So thank you. Um, and it's been, it's been a tremendous um, growth opportunity for me, but I know the things that I was doing early on, I would have benefited so much more if I was documenting and sharing and connecting with people beyond my classroom and my school, it would have taken me to such different levels. Um, and so I wish that I would have done that earlier. And many teachers will say, but I'm not there yet. It's not perfect. I can't do it. And I said all those things. I wrote lots of papers. I stuck them on post-it notes, right? They were in like, they were turned in for assignments, but I never shared them with people other than my teachers or my teachers next door. Um, and, and I just think that that's something I would push every educator to do for themselves and for others. And there's no, there's really no better time to start than now, right? Like it's, yeah. it's easy to say that you should, could have started 10 years ago. Uh, I wish, you know, I would have done that too. And I think part of it is not only the benefit of people seeing your ideas and seeing the things that you actually share and learning from you. But I think it's really powerful and the opportunity that you can go look back. I, I, I actually remember writing uh, a post about how administrators need to like get on Twitter. And if you're not like you're becoming irrelevant, blah, blah, blah. And I actually took that post uh, years later and it was super popular, got a ton of retweets, a uh, ton of shares. And then I actually took that post and said, look, my tone was terrible here. I actually think that I got a, a lot of a please, applause from people that agreed with me, but I didn't bring, you know, people to do this. And, you know, my perspective have changed. And so like, maybe like I, 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 the message is okay, but the delivery was terrible. And I think looking at that and learning and growing yourself is something that we expect from our kids. And I think that's a powerful thing. And I know you do that really well. Well, I would say, I think a lot of people have said that, like, you're not innovative if you don't use technology. You're not mm. innovative if you don't use, you know, if you're not on Twitter. People have, like, shamed people for that. And I've seen some of the most amazing practices. I've seen hundreds and hundreds of classrooms that people don't share and they're not on Twitter because they're busy working, right? And so I think that that, like, that shaming of people or thinking that you're only you're only innovative if you're sharing everything is, is wrong. And we want to be able to have everyone be able to share what they're doing um, without labels and just because it's good practice. And I think that's one of the things that I'm really excited about because I know um, how popular your blog is. And when your book comes out, I know that you're going to share a lot of those nuggets, but you're going to share it in a way that, you know, shows humility, you know, that you're still learning the process. So we are pumped for this book. <laughs> you like that? I'm excited. Just got to finish You like it. that? You like that? Anyways, so... I honestly just love doing this just to have these, the soundboard too. I like, I love the conversations, but I just think it's fun. So, uh, this is part, and this is part of me too. Remember I was talking about this actually, um, we did a little review. You were actually my first guest on the first like season where I'm just, I'm going to do a podcast. Right. Yep. And, uh, I remember the first podcast I did last year, I, I went in the basement, found like a quiet room, put on headphones and talked into my phone and, you know, now I'm like, you know, getting into it. So like, I think the advice that you give, um, is just start, just go, don't yeah. worry about like, I don't have this or I don't have this, but to start and, you know, let it progress and kind of let your passion take you. So Katie, thanks so much for being a part of the three minute conversation and everyone. Thanks for listening. You gotta do the cop. You gotta do the cop. You gotta do the cop. Thanks for being here, Katie.